be here in, in my native New York. Uh, to old, old friends and, and new friends that I've picked up along the way, like Dear Benjamin and Peter Van Buren, and talk about whistleblowers. Uh, Peter now, now lives here. NSA, there used to be something called the First Commandment. Do uh -huh. I know what that is? Thou shalt not eavesdrop on American citizens without a warrant. Now, it didn't always be so rigorously adhered to, but after the indignity and the crimes that were revealed in the 70s and the FISA Act came in. Uh, well, here's an example. I was on the receiving end of some of these intercepted messages and many of them came in with razor holes. in those days. And I, I asked the first time, I said, what's this? It was the names of, the names of American citizens. But they wouldn't, wouldn't take the chance to just black them out. <laughs> they razor them out. That, that's how seriously, remember that, Peter? That's how seriously uh, and it's Say to look at that obligation. Now, fast forward to uh, uh, 2001 before 9 11. I say again, before 9 11. Cheney. And Bush called General Michael Hayden, who was head of the NSA in at the time, and they said, Now, uh, General Hayden, we know about that first commandment out there in the NSA, but uh, uh, we want to tell you, forget about it. about the Fourth Amendment Constitution, but uh, we have some special instructions for you to go out there, make sure you get back doors to at t Verizon, and everybody else. And that happened 
again before 9-11. Now, after 9-11, of course, we went on steroids. So there's no, no denying that. We really went on steroids. And so, so uh, what, what do we have after 9-11? Well, we have this full program, uh, indiscriminate monitoring and direct violation of the, the Fourth Amendment. And, you know, when I, I go on radio or TV, I, I always try to say to the interviewer, uh, the Fourth Amendment is only, it's only one sentence. So, okay, if I say it, and then before they can react, I say the Fourth Amendment says the right of the citizens to be secure. So we're talking secure here. We're talking security. Okay. The right of citizens to be secure against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. And no shall issue to accept the probable cause supported by, by oath or affirmation and particularly defining the place to be searched or the person or thing to be seized. Period. Okay. What could be clearer than that? Probable cause. Now, after um, NSA was set loose on, on us as well as everyone else, um, James Rison of the New York Times found out about it. And then, anybody know when he found out about that? Summer of 2004. Okay. That was an election year. And so, so uh, Ryzen went to his, uh, his upper is at the New York Times. just said, this is pretty explosive stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, it's got to be published. And they said, well, let's check that out. With the White House, that's the way, <laughs> that's the, way that's the New York Times works out. They and the White House know best what, what, what we should know about. And so Bush put it for terrorism, terrorism, national security, 9-11, 9-11, terrorism. National security can't do it, and so Verizon was prevented from telling the story for the last few months before the election two thousand four. Fast forward to December of two thousand and five. Rising goes to Salisbury and his upper is at the time. He says, you know, I don't know, that's going to be a little awkward uh, for you guys because my book is in Galilee. And, and uh, you know, I'm going to make some big bucks from, from you all. And uh, we haven't put a story out about how the Bush administration And so, so like is, oh my goodness, we better go down. So, so he told, he called Bush, and Bush will come down, uh, come down the over office. And they had this big dispute. And Bush said, 9-11, terrorism, terrorism, 9-11, national security. And Salzburg 
Marcus said, oh, come on. Uh, you know, come on. We held off for 15, 16 months. I'd be too embarrassing. I got it. So, I don't know the race. So we left that. And that was the 4th of December. There's no, 
no probable cause in the Fourth Amendment. <laughs> So I'm up 
there in New York in, in the uh, in the green room, and in rushes Bobby Ray Inman. No tie on. I've never seen him so disheveled. So somebody, one of his worshippers, put a foot on the tie. You know, and, and I said. I knew that the subject was whether he should be the CIA director. So I'm sitting back there, you know, quite acquiescing in, 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 uh, in Inman taking part of my time with Lou Dobbs, you know. I'm watching the, the screen there, and uh, Dobbs says, well, how do you feel about the... the the door <laughs> goes out the... how how'd you change your mind there Bobby in one week how'd you change your mind and then, well why he changed his mind he got the orders from Washington the old club to make sure that he changes his, his, his spiel there so when it Fun 
defending the FISA court. These the faux, faux judges that are, they, they pretend to be uh, Article Three, 3 judges that are not, they're not rubber stamps, as you know. And how about bird dogging people like Michael Hayden, Alexander? I mean, these guys uh, violated their oath, the oath that we all took to support the defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I think it's our job to hold them accountable because our president doesn't have the guts to. He's afraid of them. But we the people can do it. If we show the guts, 